Hi, this is Jana with Bees Knees, and I am so excited to be here today with TechRap to introduce you to their mats. They are light tech, standard tech, and strong tech. And these really are fantastic because not only are they super affordable, they have the right amount of grip to hold your materials in place, but then also they release your materials easily and without any of that adhesive residue stuck on the back, which a lot of other mats that I've used have. Today I'm going to walk you through hacks for cleaning these to make them last even longer, how to put your materials on them properly and how to remove them, and then also I'm going to tell you what type of materials should be used on each different type of mat. I am so excited to introduce you to this line of mats. One of the very first things I do when I get my mats is you notice that every mat is covered by this clear plastic covering and that is your mat's best friend. That keeps your mat free of dirt and debris when it's not in use. So one of the first things I do is I write the date on my covering. Now, why is that? Is it because the mat has an expiration date? No, not at all. You can write whatever you want. You can write, I love puppies. It doesn't matter. And the whole point of writing something on the cover is so you know which weight is up for your cover. So if your cover is sitting out and protecting your mat, it's collecting dust on the top. So if you take it off to use your mat and you get confused as to which one's the top and which one's the bottom, you don't want to accidentally turn it over and stick all that dust that's been collecting on the top to your mat. So that's the first thing I do anytime I get a new mat. And next what's important is making sure you're using the correct materials for each mat. So you have a strong, a standard, and a light. And I'm going to go ahead and put up a cheat sheet that I made and that's available to download from my website. We'll put the link down below the video. But you can see on here I put the materials into the different mat categories of what I personally use. So for example, for the light tack, I split up the permanent vinyl. I do the thinner regular vinyls like the color change, the glossy, the matte, um, you know, the 001 series. I use the light tack matte for those. Sometimes I find it, you know, harder to get off of the standard tack. But on the standard tack, I put the thicker, heavier permanent vinyls on, like glitter and shimmer, textured metallic, hollow and pearl. So you can take a look at these, and if you're wondering, you know, which material, this is what I recommend you start with. But it's important to match up your materials to the correct tack, because if it's not strong enough to hold it, your material is going to shift around and it's not going to get a good cut. And if it's too strong, it's not going to release it, and that's going to ruin both your material and um, shorten the life of your mat as well. So, for example, I have this piece of cardstock. I would never, ever put cardstock on strong tack. I always use the light tack for cardstock. So what I'm going to show you next is how to apply the materials to your mat. So obviously you line it up, you put it on your mat. And this tool is very important. This is a brayer. So especially for cardstock, whenever I'm using it, you just go over your material and that seals it down nice and tight to your mat. You do the same thing with vinyl. So usually I rub it down, but no matter how much I rub this brayer, just does so much more of an amazing job. If you bray that down, if you put your material on a clean mat, and I'm going to walk you through how to clean it in a moment, and you use the right material for the right mat, then you're golden. So next, let's say we've cut our materials, and I just want to show you that this is my machine, and it fits in perfectly. No problems there. But let's say we've cut our materials, not only is putting your material on the mat the correct way very important, but then also removing your material from the mat the correct way. So you never, especially with cardstock, you never want to just take it and peel your cardstock away from the mat. Why? Because this is what it does to your cardstock. It bends it. 
Same thing with your vinyl. You can, when the vinyl is cut and you have a design in there, when you peel it back like that, you're able to get the vinyl to pull away from the backing. So what you always want to do is you always want to peel the mat away from your material. Not only is it easier to get off, but then it also doesn't damage the material. So you can see, this is the side where I pulled the, the cardstock away from the mat. It's been up, it's damaged, and then the rest of it is perfect where I pulled the mat away from the cardstock. And then you do the same with vinyl. You just pull the mat away and then you don't get any bumps um, in your vinyl. Everything is smooth after your cut. Okay, now we're gonna talk about cleaning the mat. So this mat has dirt and debris all over it. It's lost some of its stick because of the dirt um, coating over top of the adhesive. So what we wanna do is clean it and prolong the life of our mats. So the first step is to remove any big pieces of paper do that using either your tweezers or your scraper. Or any big chunks of anything that might be on it. Um, big pieces of glitter. And then next, and there are, I've seen a lot of different methods out there for cleaning mats. There's cleaning spray. Uh, a popular one is the awesome cleaning spray. There's Dawn dish soap and scrubbing your mat. But personally, I don't like to scrub my mat with anything. You know, I think that works away at the adhesive. I don't like to use cleaners on it. I feel that works away at the adhesive too. So what I like to use is something that's gentle enough for a baby's bottom, baby wipes. So make sure any kind of baby wipe is fine. Make sure it's a baby wipe and not an alcohol wipe. You don't want alcohol in your wipes because that too will eat away at the adhesive. So what you do is you just take your baby wipe and I like to start up in a corner and work my way over and down, but you just go in a circular motion. And you scrub and you can see already the dirt's coming up. You can see it's a lot cleaner. You can actually see right there where my line is. It's dirty below, clean above. So it's very gentle on your mat. Um, and I actually like to do this after a particular dirty run. If I did glitter cardstock or something like that and my mat is getting dirty, just pull out one wipe, do it real quick, and then you keep, you maintain your mat's condition better that way. And that's once over, and I usually like to go twice over because if you notice as you're scrubbing in the circles, sometimes you're knocking some dirt into a clean area. So if you just go over it real quick one more time, when it's mostly clean, you'll get all the little bits. It just depends on how clean you want to get it. Or you can just spot clean it the second time. Okay, and you can see we have a nice clean mat. Now, after you finish, don't panic. It's not gonna be sticky yet. What has to happen is we just got the mat wet so it has to dry. So depending on how wet you got it, give it maybe 10, 20 minutes and then it should be good to go. So if you take care of your mats in the way I just walked through from storage to cleaning to using the right materials, I guarantee they will last as a lot longer which means less waste, less money, and I think we all want that. So thank you so much for joining me today.